the Mona Lisa, a paradigm of art, crafted with the careful knowledge and expertise of Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci. The painting's harmonious color scheme, its gentle characterization, and subtle symbolism contribute to its appeal as one of the most famous works of all time. The duct tape banana notwithstanding. But is it possible to create an interpretation of the Mona Lisa from dollar store supplies? Join me as we adventure into the unknown and let's find out. Before we continue, if you could check that you're subscribed just really, really quickly, I would really appreciate it. All right, now back to the video. Dollar store time. Where are we going? Arts and crafts section. Ooh. Do we need this? Let's see, perhaps we need the Holy Bible. Ooh, maybe some paper clips trombones <laughs> all right let's take some some glue sticks actually let's do any this is perfect ah uh, yes colored pencils for detail work i found something essential to our piece the minecraft creeper kite we need it here's all the paint wow the dollar store is more bougie than i remember oh no it's the crayons my mortal enemies don't need any of those maybe some yarn for her hair i'll take it maybe some fabric for her clothes this one Maybe. All right, take it. Hmm, maybe the Mona Lisa will appreciate some Paw Patrol wall decals. Let's get them. These are not the most artistic quality paintbrushes, but you know, I feel like it'll work. Let's grab one. Give me. Oh, oh, oh. Just walked around the store for like 15 minutes looking for construction paper when it's right here. Yes, please. Give it to me. Perfect. It looks like these are the best scissors we can buy. At least they come with lift assist. Perfect for preschool. Perfect for me. All right, it looks like we've got two options. We got foam board and we have science fair project. I think we get foam board. The hall. So we're back from the dollar store. We survived and we did pretty well too. We only spent $33 when my budget was 50. So eh, pretty good. So here we have our piece of foam board that's gonna act as our canvas. And to help us along, I've printed out this reference image of the Mona Lisa. Mmm, she's gorgeous. And now before we begin our piece, we're gonna have to go ahead and measure out the proper size. Now the original Mona Lisa here is approximately 30 inches by 21 inches. This piece of poster board is not that big. I don't think it is. What is it here? Oh, I have a ruler at the bottom. How helpful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna size this down, make this a more manageable endeavor. So it's math time, we're gonna have to do some math. The ratio is 30 to 21. If you divide those by three, you get the lowest common denominator, which would be 10 over seven. And then we wanna double that. It'll be 20 by 14. We did it, we did it. Good job team. So we're gonna take our trusty, jot pencils that we picked up and we're gonna measure out 20 by 14. Let's get measuring. All right, so we've got our measuring done. I've gone ahead and left a one inch border on all of the sides. I don't know, in case we need to frame it for whatever reason. I tried using these scissors to cut. Uh, my hand is in a lot of pain right now. These don't quite have the power necessary to cut through this foam board. So uh, that was a struggle. But now before we begin painting, I wanna go ahead and test out the paints on this scrap of foam board because I have a feeling that they're going to just bleed right into this. I don't think the color is going to stay smooth on top of this. Let's test it out. Let's try it. I have little to no hope. Actually, you know what? It's not bleeding through. I am surprised, shocked even. Look at this. It's not that bad. The brush struggled, I'm not gonna lie. That brush, oof, oof. That's gonna be a big problem for us later. All right, now we're gonna spread around the paint just a little bit, see what happens. It's kind of working. The foam board isn't completely destroyed. I mean, it's like flaking a little bit, if you look here, but better than expected. Okay, so now that we've done our little tester, let's go ahead and let's begin working on the background here. We're gonna lay out the colors in construction paper and in paint 
using our bigger paint brushes because this one, this flimsy, feeble little brush, not good enough. So let's get out our big paint brushes and let's work on the background. Two glue sticks later and we're done with the construction paper portion of this. So I've gone ahead and looking at sort of the strips of color on the painting, I've laid down the construction paper. You know, I thought ripping it would make it look a little more blended together, but I've realized that doesn't matter because we're just gonna paint it anyways. But this foundation will hopefully help us get the right hues of the painting as we go in and paint it. I am sort of concerned about the glue. I don't know if the paint will stick to the glue or if it'll make like a, a goopy mess, but you know, we'll figure it out. I'm sure it will be fine, maybe. So let's leave this to dry and we'll come back and start painting. Yeah. So we've put down the construction paper and we've waited for it to dry. It should be mostly dry now. On to the most important part, the Paw Patrol decals and the Creeper Kite, both of which I have no idea what I'm gonna do with. You know, the Paw Patrol decals actually are pretty easy. We could put them like in the background, maybe over her shoulder. We'll paint on top of them. Let's put, which Paw Patrol character? Ooh, the firefighter, he's cute. I'm gonna take him. Where will he go? I'm thinking we put him in like the orangey reddish part. He can go right here where this mountain's supposed to be. So beautiful. Just as Leonardo da Vinci would have done. Creeper Kite time. Let's see what this is. Creeper kite, creeper kite, creeper kite. Oh, oh, stuff is falling out. What is this? Why is there this? No. Hello? Oh, I thought it was gonna be like shaped like a creeper. This is, hmm. What is this for? Where are the directions? Hold on, cause I don't know. On back of kite, remove spine from bottom connector, attach tails to spine and re, no. That's too much work, I'm not doing that. No, no, no. Goodbye, kite. So the kite, uh, kind of high effort. Don't think we're gonna add it to the Mona Lisa, unfortunately. Sorry, creeper. Okay, so after that little intermission, I guess it's time to start painting. Let's do it. So for the background, I followed the strips of color that we laid out in the construction paper. I filled in some of the vague mountainy shapes that are in the landscape. It kind of looks like an alien planet. Like where is the Mona Lisa? Is she exploring Mars? What's happening here? But to do this, I used those big painter's brushes, which were a struggle. It was hard to get paint down on the paper. Additionally, you can kind of see the construction paper through the paint because the acrylics didn't go on as opaque as I would have liked. Um, it's kind of a mess, but we're gonna fix it because we're gonna put the Mona Lisa on top of it. I think it's gonna work out. It's probably gonna be fine. Have I mentioned that I hate painting? Because I hate painting. We're done with the background for now. All we have left to do is paint the entirety of the Mona Lisa. Hmm. Yay. Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> the big paintbrushes kinda had a dry brush, textury, impressionist effect, as you can see up there in the green part. It's not horrible. I mean, it's not great either, let's be real. We can salvage this, I think. So let's wait for this to dry and then we'll continue. Now I'm gonna be the first to admit, my painting skills are, uh, questionable to say the least. I think I need a bit more practice in that department, especially in portraiture, but nevertheless, I still gave it my best. So to begin, did I make a sketch or did I plan out in any way how I was going to approach this? No, of course not. I went in sort of freehand and blocked out the colors and the basic shapes of the Mona Lisa. It was at this point that I realized that the paints would not fully cover the background. And I think this is because of the foam board. On stretch canvas, you can add color almost indefinitely. You can keep building it up and the surface will hold it. The foam board and the construction paper are a completely different case entirely. In the end, the Mona Lisa's face was a uh, kind of green, but that's okay, it adds character. You know, now she fits into the alien landscape. Additionally, as I was going down and of course, freehanding, I experienced the moment where you reach the end of the poster board and have to fit in like an extra letter to your title. So you have to cramp it sort of. That's what happened with the hands. So the proportions are kind of a uh, whack, but 
Nevertheless, this was a good experiment, and I hope that it shows that it's not really about the supplies, it's more about the practice and the skills that you've built up as an artist. If you're someone who can't access the fancier supplies yet, don't feel discouraged. There's always ways to practice, there's always ways to get better, and not everyone's process is the same, right? Of course, I have a super, super long way to go, but this was a fun little exercise in using supplies that are more difficult to work with and thinking sort of outside of the box for solutions. So let's head over and let's check on the final result. Yeah. And there we have her, our dollar store Mona Lisa. And oh boy, does she look like a dollar store Mona Lisa. But we've done it. We're finished with our, our beautiful masterpiece here. I do have to say she's a little creepy, but um, no, there's no but, she is creepy. My rather poor painting skills aside, I hope that this can serve as sort of a proof of concept for how these dollar store projects can look. <laughs> because in the end, we did do this with dollar store supplies and it came out, you know, okay. I've gone through like the five stages of grief with this thing. She's scary. I don't like the way she looks at you. Also this painting, if you've noticed, the eyes follow the camera just like the real Mona Lisa, which don't like that, don't like that at all. But anyways, thank you for joining me on this dollar store adventure and have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Welcome to the end card, everyone. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. Um, don't roast me too hard in the comments, please. <laughs> I know I'm not the best artist, but you know, I tried, I tried. But also I wanted to mention that it's back to school time for me. So my uploads may be more infrequent than they've been recently. Sorry about that. But make sure you're subscribed so that you can catch when my videos drop. I would appreciate that. Again, thank you so much for watching and bye bye for real. Yeah, have a good day.